Well, we are just five days away to voters deciding who they prefer in a number of key races, including gubernatorial and Senate contests here in Florida. And coming up at 530, we're going to look at the three big issues when it comes to this election. The political shift among Hispanic voters in Florida, plus the role election denialism is playing in races across the country. But we begin with campaign funding disparities between Republicans and Democrats. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nasha Sherman. I'm Jim Barry. We're going to talk about the money with Facing South Florida host Jim DeFeedy. So, Jim, let's talk about the governor's race. Ron DeSantis has far outraised Charlie Crist, who has struggled to attract the big money Democratic donors from outside the state. How has that disparity impacted the campaigns that the two have run? Well, let's let's define what the issue is. Let's see. Uh, let's understand now. In four years ago, when Ron DeSantis ran for governor, he collected about fifty-eight, fifty-nine million dollars in different contributions. This time around, he's well over two hundred million, around two hundred and twenty million dollars. In fact, it is now projected that he can't spend even if he tried he couldn't spend all the money he's got because there's only so much tv you can buy he's probably going to come out of this campaign with about 90 million dollars still in the bank that he could roll over into a presidential campaign but so compare that 200 million plus that that ron DeSantis has charlie christ only has about $31 million. He's, he's far behind Ron DeSantis. And to give you some comparison, four years earlier, when the Democrat Andrew Gillum ran, Andrew Gillum ended up collecting close to 60 million. Mm -hmm. So there's a real disparity, not just in terms of being able to get your message out, but clearly, while the rest of the country, you know, Ron DeSantis is a partisan figure who you can't really, you know, may attract outside donors, Charlie Chris has not been able to tap into that. And as a result, you see it on the airwaves, mm -hmm. Ron DeSantis' message is everywhere. Yeah. Wow. And Jim, it's not just the governor's race. What are you seeing in terms of some of the legislative races? Well, the state Senate, you know, the, the Republican committee that oversees running state Senate campaigns has upwards of $40 million. The Democratic side, about $10 million. And let me give you one example of one race here locally that I think really embodies this. Ileana Garcia, State Senator Ileana Garcia. She has raised and is spending from outside money about $2 million. Now, she's not engaging in public debate. She's not attending forums. She's remaining pretty much a ghost candidate in a lot of ways. Her opponent, Raquel Pacheco, has only raised about $200,000. And I'm afraid we're seeing this across the state where Republican candidates for the state legislature are not engaging, not showing up at forums, not doing debates, not going to newspaper or editorial board meetings, and are instead taking a ton of corporate money big corporate money out of Tallahassee to basically go over the voters' heads and get right into them through TV ads and direct mail pieces. And that's a winning strategy, but I don't think it's a good one for voters. Hey, Jim, very quickly, Val Demings is one Democrat who has outraised Marco Rubio, uh, but apparently, according to the polls, she still trails him. So what's the dynamic there? No, no, you're absolutely right. Marco Rubio, I, I think Val Demings has been able to tap into that national database and get donors, small dollar donors, to donate to her, whereas Marco Rubio uh, has just fallen flat. It's, it's actually remarkable. He's complained that it's social media websites and other things and spam filters that are blocking his efforts, but it's a real issue for, for Marco Rubio. But as you said, he's ahead in the polls, but this is not working well for Marco Rubio. Mm -hmm. Will be interesting to see how it all plays out. Jim, thank you for your insight.